Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Harpreet Singh and thank you, Dr. Rajiv Chawla for giving me this great opportunity to be speaker here in this prestigious uh, <coughs> symposium. So in next 15 minutes, I shall be talking on macrovascular complications in diabetes, which, when and how. Thank you for giving me this topic. As we all know that cardiovascular disease is a leading cause of morbidity and mortality in diabetes patients. What we know that risk of CAD is threefold higher in type 2 diabetes patients and up to 80% of mortality in type 2 diabetes patients is due to cardiovascular disease. Mortality due to CVD was 7.5 times greater among persons with type 2 diabetes without prior MI when compared to person without type 2 diabetes and even without previous MI. It is also considered as a cardiovascular risk equivalent. Diabetes is a cardiovascular risk equivalent because type 1 diabetes or type 2 diabetes subjects with no previous MI are at similar risk of an acute coronary event as non-diabetic subjects with established coronary artery disease. So it has been a point of debate that intensive glycemic control and cardiovascular risk reduction whether these two things go by together or not. We know that intensive glycemic control can reduce the microvascular complications, but does it really reduce the macrovascular complications? It always remains a question to be debated. Intensive glucose control treatment substantially decreases the risk of microvascular complications, but not myocardial infarction. What we could know after the follow-up of UKPDS, a wonderful concept of the legacy effect could be understood when we know that intensive glucose control strategy, if it is begin at time of diagnosis, significantly reduces the risk of myocardial infarction and mortality from any cause and demonstrated a sustained legacy effect but it could not be seen in the patient, those who keep their diabetes uncontrolled in their early days, but they try to have the intensive control once the disease is advanced. We all know that lipid lowering plays a pivotal role in the primary prevention of cardiovascular disease in type 2 diabetes patient. Data are favorable and suggestive that every diabetic patient should be given the statin for reduction and prevention of the CVD. Antihypertensives again plays an important role in terms of the tight blood pressure control in patients with hypertension and diabetes confers a clinically important reduction in the risk of diabetes related morbidity and mortality. So if we talk about the first part of this uh, question that macrovascular complications in diabetes, which, when and how, so I'm addressing the first part that which macrovascular complication. We, as far as we know that macrovascular complications are the three varieties, what we all know that coronary heart disease, disease of the blood vessels, which is supplying to the heart. Cerebrovascular disease is a disease of the blood vessels supplying to the brain and peripheral arterial disease, the blood vessels supplying to the peripheral organs, including arms and legs. So once we talk about the cardiovascular disease, primary cause of the mortality, it is and risk of CVD is directly proportional to the level of fasting plasma glucose. It has been well established of the studies done in various parts of the India as well as abroad. Cerebrovascular complications account for almost 6 million deaths annually in India. Patients with diabetes mellitus are at markedly increased risk of the death due to cerebrovascular disease. The increased relative risk for developing stroke in men is 1.5 to 2 fold and 2 to 6.45 fold in women seen even after the early diagnosis. Peripheral artery disease is a known complication of type 2 diabetes associated with increased risk of lower extremity amputation. It is also a marker for the atherothrombosis in cardiovascular and cerebrovascular as well as renovascular beds. Individuals with diabetes have a four-fold increase in incidence of the peripheral artery disease and mortality than non-diabetic. 75% of the population with peripheral artery disease and diabetes are asymptomatic. If present, they are mostly due to claudication of rest pain. So let's come to the another part that is when. 
we all know about the multiple cardiovascular disease risk these are the modifiable as well as non modifiable if we talk about the major modifiable risk factors like high blood pressure abnormal blood lipids tobacco use physical inactivity obesity unhealthy diet diabetes on the other hand there are few more other modifiable risk factors if we can modify them then probably it may also impact in reduction of the cardiovascular disease significantly like low socio economic status mental ill health psychosocial stress use of alcohol use of certain medications which may increase this risk lipoproteins and left ventricular hypertrophy many a times we have seen multiple diabetic patients comes with the diagnosis of diabetes even at the time of the diagnosis of diabetes they are carrying the left ventricular hypertrophy sometimes it may be because of the uncontrolled hypertension or ignored hypertension non modifiable risk factors includes advancing age heredity gender ethnicity and some of the novel risk factors has also been known that excess homocysteine in the blood inflammatory markers exclude, uh, especially the crp and abnormal blood coagulation like elevated blood levels of the fibrinogen if we talk about the cerebrovascular disease the certain other risk factors may also be almost similar risk factors are there but maybe few more risk factors which will be will be adding to the risk of cerebrovascular disease like atrial fibrillation psychosocial factors alcohol intake and apart from that similar risk factors which i discussed with the cerebrovascular uh, cardiovascular disease were also working here like hypertension smoking obesity unhealthy diet low physical activity diabetes apart from this there are the certain non modifiable risk factors like family history male gender history of stroke and increasing age if we talk about the peripheral artery disease there are certain risk factors for the development of the peripheral arterial disease modifiable ones are almost the same which were with the cardiovascular disease one uh, in fact the mental stress depression and hyperviscosity and hypercoagulable states are also there which may cause the cardiovascular disease risk also they are also responsible for the peripheral artery disease non modifiable risk factors are again the aging family history vascular disease atherosclerotic disease chronic kidney disease and obviously smoking and obesity non traditional risk factors we can also enumerate the same as we have enumerated with the cardiovascular disease so now the question arises how what is the mechanism of this hyperglycemia and insulin resistance among various other factors are thought to contribute significantly to the atherosclerotic changes and the pathogenesis of macrovascular complications in diabetes do both are commonly observed in diabetic patient insulin resistance usually develop years before the hyperglycemia and it becomes clinically significant the wonderful mechanism what we know about the cardiovascular disease and its progression endothelial dysfunction is a phenomena which starts about 10 to 15 years before the diagnosis of diabetes actually this is the initiating point of atherothrombotic disease atherosclerotic disease starts from this endothelial dysfunction it gradually increases with advancement of the insulin resistance and ultimately even when the patient is diagnosed with the diabetes or sometimes even in the pre diabetes it becomes full fledged atherothrombotic disease and sometimes ends up with the myocardial infarction the main mechanism of the cerebrovascular disease in patient with type 2 diabetes is the atherosclerosis again so however it has been reported that atherosclerosis was an inflammatory response in essence patient with dm or diabetes what I, what we call experience some pathologic condition like long term high blood glucose and multi substance metabolic disturbance which damaged the blood vessel endothelium for a long time so either we talk about the cerebrovascular disease or we talk about the cardiovascular disease endothelial dysfunction remains as the root evil for both the complications of macrovascular variety type 2 diabetes it is manifesting in the form of the hyperglycemia also gives the uh, condition of the hyperviscosity because of the high blood glucose level makes the blood more viscous hyperlipidemia and hypoxemia all these are responsible for cytokine secretion factor which may damage the endothelium and responsible for endothelial dysfunction 
causes the activation of the macrophage and internalization of the lipids. And then smooth muscle cells transform into foam cells. Excessive proliferation of the smooth muscle cells takes place and ending up with the cerebrovascular disease with diabetes. Similarly, we can see the ischemic stroke and hemorrhagic stroke are occurring with the similar phenomena and similar mechanism of action in cerebrovascular disease. Once we talk about the peripheral artery disease, it is due to the blockage of the artery supplying the blood to the lower limbs, usually secondary to atherosclerosis. The most severe, se severe clinical manifestation of the peripheral artery disease is critical limb ischemia which is associated with the risk of limb loss and mortality due to cardiovascular event. So, in a nutshell, we can say atherosclerosis or atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease is, res is actually responsible for all varieties of the macrovascular complication. What we can see here that once this hypoxia is increased because of narrowing down of atherosclerotic artery, then it ends up with increasing hemodynamic changes, which gradually increases with the macrovascular adaptations. The hemodynamic changes like occlusion, severity of occlusion increasing gradually, and blood flow velocity is being reduced and perfusion pressure is increasing. It is adapted macrovascular adaptation by vascular remodeling, inflammation, apoptosis, altered circulating markers, and Finally, microvascular adaptation in the form of the activation of the ECs, WBCs, activation of the platelets, increased leukocyte adhesions and free radical productions. And tissue remodeling ends up with the inadequate perfusion, chronic inflammation, increased oxidative stress and mitochondrial injury. So finally, the muscle fibers are damaged. So once we talk about the atherosclerosis, this is not a thing which is simply causing the occlusion of the artery, but it is actually responsible for decreased ankle blood pressure, angiogenesis and arteriogenesis at the same time, endothelial dysfunction, which starts in the earlier parts of the insulin resistance and muscle fiber damage, which harms the peripheral arteries as well as is responsible for the diabetic foot kind of the conditions and many times we see the rest pain, chronic non-healing ulcers, gangrene and finally amputation as a result of that. So steps to be taken, macrovascular complications like cardiovascular, cerebrovascular, peripheral vascular can be prevented with some intervention strategies like discouraging a smoking habit, proper diet, regular physical activity, strict glycemic and blood pressure control, lowering low density lipid, lipoprotein, cholesterol level and aspirin therapy. What could be the goals for therapy in cardiovascular disease? We all know the risk factors. LDL cholesterol is to be kept less than 70. LDL cholesterol levels, if it is elevated, to be kept Again, less than 70s in diabetic patient, even a non-diabetic patient. Triglyceride level 200 to 499 is non-HDL cholesterol level is to be kept less than 130. HDL cholesterol level is less than 40 is actually uh, is uh, causing the more, uh, causing the um, uh, propensity of the cardiovascular and macrovascular diseases more. Hypertension is again is to be corrected up to the target of less than 140-90. Nowadays, the recommendation says that should be targeted less than 130-80. Prothrombotic pro -thrombotic state, hyperglycemia to be corrected up to less than 7 HbA1c. Overweight is to be corrected in reducing the BMI, whatever is there. Physical inactivity is to be reduced and activities to be improved, cigarette smoking and adverse nutrition is to be targeted. If, as far as the stroke is concerned, the therapeutic goals includes the correction of risk factors in the form of the hypertension, hyperlipidemia and diabetes, as well as the overweight correction or obesity correction in the form of the weight loss and physical inactivity, diet and nutrition, cigarette smoking is to be stopped and alcohol consumption is to be discouraged. In peripheral arterial disease, the therapeutic goals includes the antiplatelets, statins, ACE inhibitors are main responsible agents which can achieve the therapeutic goals for reduction in the occurrence of peripheral arterial disease. 
blood pressure is to be tightly controlled at least less than 140 systolic but if possible in diabetic patient less than 130 and diastolic blood pressure is to be tried to bring down less than 80 in diabetic patient ldl cholesterol is to be corrected less than 2.5 millimole per liter in all patient and diabetes is to be managed less than 7 HbA1c. Smoking is to be reduced as much as possible. Complete cessation is required, especially for the reduction of peripheral arterial disease and BMI is to be corrected up to the maximum extent. Conclusion and takeaways of this talk is type 2 diabetes causes a variety of macrovascular complications through different pathogenic pathways that include hyperglycemia and insulin resistance. Cardiovascular disease is the primary cause of death in diabetic patients. Many clinical studies have shown a connection between diabetes and vascular disease, but almost always other risk factors are present in diabetic patients like hypertension, obesity, and dyslipidemia, and they all have to be corrected together. Modifiable risk factors can be easily managed through lifestyle intervention, medical nutrition therapy, and pharmacological therapy. Regular screening and self-monitoring of HbA1c is recommended to avoid or to reduce the occurrence of macrovascular complication. Thank you very much for your kind listening.